Welcome to the second of the series A Year in Our Garden. This is basically a recap of what's happened in the month of August here in our section of Tasmania. And whereas July was dominated by lots and lots of rain, now in August we are getting some patches of sunshine like we have today. And as we've got flowers coming out on these fruit trees now, it's really important that we actually get this sunshine because it allows the bees to fly and do their job of fertilizing so that we are actually going to get some fruit. Other things are in flower also, the daffodils particularly, we're seeing a lot of uh, show from them and that's some really nice colour to see around and other little bits and pieces are starting to come as well and show some flower. Amongst the fruit trees it's not just the plums that you're seeing behind me but also the apricots are in flower now and the peaches are just starting to open. Speaking of fruit, we did harvest early in August the kiwi fruit. There was beginning to be some bird attack on them because they were getting sufficiently ripe enough so I picked the whole lot and we've been enjoying those kiwi fruit over August. The major job that I got into early in the month was pruning and I recorded a few segments at that time and I'll let you watch those. This morning I'm finally getting to some pruning and I'm tackling these little apple trees. These are golden delicious and they produce masses and masses of fruit but they suffered considerably from the fact that when they were young they were attacked by possums because I didn't have fences at the time and so the shape is not really good and I'm going to try and achieve some better shape here. I've already been this morning and tackled the plum trees, uh, prune and two plums and I've been fairly hard on them particularly the prune it produces masses of fruit more than we actually need or can consume. My goal is to actually bring it to a level that I can actually net and also to let more uh, light and air through the tree so that it has less disease problems because I had quite a bit of mildew in it this last year. So hopefully this does the trick. You can see from the pieces on the ground that I've been quite uh, savage on it but I think it will do really well and benefit from that. So again with this apple what I'm going to do is try and get rid of a lot of the lower branches because I've had a lot more disease in those lower branches and I also noticed that the apples down there are smaller. The best apples come up around this area where they get more sun. I will open the middle a little bit as well and look for crossovers so let's get into it and of course cutting off these ones that are coming out I really don't want it any bigger than it is these crosses over we already get too much fruit so reducing the size won't hurt at all not one little bit I mow around here too and so that's a good reason to take out these lower branches which if you've got fruit on them you often knock it with the mower anyway so it's not really a good thing. <laughs>
Early in the month, Elizabeth was feeling quite energetic and decided to pull out this row of agapanthus that was looking a bit rough and needed to be changed to something better. The agapanthus really didn't do that well here in this location. So with a little help, we got them out and I rotary hoed the area up and Elizabeth planted some camellias. Mulch that up with some wood chip and there are six camellia bushes here now and I think they're going to look really nice in the future. They're only young trees at this stage but we have successful camellias growing that are doing quite well in this area so I think it'll be a much better result and look a lot better in the long term. So what's happened here in the veggie garden? Well, I cleaned out the asparagus, got the weeds out and I put down a layer of compost on those. So they are set now for the spring growth and harvest. Also, Samuel and I got to and planted some broad beans. A little fine weather like we're getting at the moment is the perfect opportunity to get the plastic off this patch and I'll scythe that off. The plastic has really accelerated the growth of this green manure and also kept the ground drier. So that means that I can scythe it off now, rotary hoe it in and then I'm going to plant this with some broad beans and also a few cabbages. Okay. This soil is beginning to look really nice and getting a good colour and yeah. nice and free, isn't it Samuel? Yeah. But I'd like to show you what I started with. If I dig down in this corner, you can see the type of clay that I began with. And look, most of, well, at least hard clay. half of this bed was originally clay like that. Quite just red, hard clay. Not something that really wanted to grow anything. And it's taken a few years of adding organic matter what? to the soil and compost to actually better. get it into something decent. But it certainly can be done. The broad beans we're planting are from our own seed. So there's a bit of rubbish in there and a few that are not good. So it just doesn't hurt to give them a, a bit of a sort. Be careful Samuel, don't drop the good ones. Show it to them. There's some that have got a bit of fungus in and something like that so they won't be Does viable. Does this one have fungus? Yes, that one's not fungus. Hello, look at this. The timing of planting broad beans, people do have different times that they like. A traditional thing is to plant them early before winter and they will grow over winter and come reasonably early but I find here that they don't, while they grow over winter and even flower, they won't set anything. So I prefer to plant them now as we're coming towards the end of winter. They will grow and move without any hesitation towards flowering and those flowers will set beans immediately because the weather is already warmer when they're coming. So I find it, it's a nice steady progression to, to uh, setting some beans. So. That's the way I prefer to do it. You so the last thing we're putting in to this cabbages. section is some cabbages. Cabbages, if you plant them before winter, will often here grow and then uh, basically they will bolt as soon as springtime comes. So planting them closer to spring means that they should grow uh, fairly steadily into some good hearts and that's what I want here and do it before the uh, I've got some two cabbages next to each other before the uh, cabbage moth come out so that I don't have to worry about hopefully netting them now at the end of the month those broad beans are showing through so it's been probably about three weeks and they're coming up nicely what else has happened in this veggie garden I have planted some snow peas here in this but they haven't shown through yet so in another week or so we should see them coming through the broccoli we have been picking still but it's really about time to pull those plants out now we did plant some more broccoli plants into the greenhouse that will come along in succession we also have the other lot over here which we are harvesting currently getting some nice heads off those what's going to happen next here well 
in early September, so that is in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to plant carrot seed, beetroot seed, silver beet seed, and probably some kale seed as well. So those seeds will go in. I have prepared a couple of beds already, and I need to do a couple of others where these broccoli come out. There'll be some seeds going in there too. And that will start the spring growth going. The other planting of course that has occurred over August was the potatoes and some of you may have seen that in the earlier video about compost where I planted some early potatoes and it's going to be still a couple of weeks before we really see them showing through. The other major job that I have just completed at the end of this August is to fertilize the fruit trees. This is both the deciduous trees and also citrus also the berries, basically a complete run through of the garden, fertilising them. The main thing that I utilise is some blood and bone. Now I do have a previous video on fertilising fruit trees and I'll put a link to that so you can go and watch that if you're interested. I also use some lime around the apple trees because they really do appreciate a little extra lime. But that's really been the major activities over August. It has been a busy month, but now with this sunshine, the grass is drying out and I can actually go and do some mowing. So I'll leave you with some shots of our daffodils in flower and we'll come back for another update next month. Mm -hmm.